Guaranteed tough. AT&T, rethink possible. Y juegos Panamericanos 2011, la fiesta de América. Sancionada por la Comisión de Box Profesional de Guadalajara. Supervisores de CMB, the WBC Supervisors in Attendance, Jose Mansur y Rex Walker. Y los tres jueces por este combate, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Yuji Fukuchi, Max DeLuca, and David Sutherland. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, el referee Hector Afur. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, los jueces están listos y los peleadores están listos. Si están listos, tapatíos, dile al mundo. Presentado primero en la esquina azul, con los patroncios negros y un peso de 69 kilos, 200 gramos. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed it officially 152 and one half pounds. Su record profesional excelente con 45 victorias. 31 ganadas por no cap y solamente 4 derrotas. His professional record is outstanding. 45 victories, including 31 knockouts. Just 4 defeats. De Sheffield, Yorkshire, England. He is the number one contender, El Retador, the challenger, Ryan Spiceboy Roll! Is up at the esquina roja. Con los pantaloncillos verde con dorado y un peso de 69 kilos 500 gramos. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Wearing green, trimmed in gold, he weighed in officially 153 and one quarter pounds. Su record perfecto. 36 victorias. Un empate. 26 knockouts. His professional record is perfect. 36 victories. One draw. 26 wins coming by way of knockout. El orgullo de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. El invicto. El campeón super mundial de CMB, Saúl Canelo. I got you the description of the, the dressing room. Yo te di la instrucción de los camerinos. I want the clean fight, okay? Necesito una pelea limpia. You are ready? Tú estás listo? Porque en guante vamos. Bien. He packs the building in Guadalajara. He's packed it in Los Angeles. He packs a punch. Canelo Alvarez, just shy of his 21st birthday. Trying to pack a big win against Ryan Rhodes who hopes he's packed an upset from Sheffield, England. And we're underway. Scheduled for 12. Alvarez with five first round knockouts in his career. Rhodes with seven. 17 of Rhodes, 31 have come within the first two rounds. Campaigned his whole career at 154 and 160. Unlike the Matthew Hatton fight, Alvarez's last fight, the guy who was coming up in weight, Alvarez has somebody in front of him that's very comfortable at 154. And yeah, Alvarez is starting out just like he normally does. He's very poised at the beginning of a, at the beginning of a fight. I love to see this from a young fighter because he's prepared to go the distance if he has to. Rhodes has been down five times in his career. He's been stopped twice. Jason Matthews stopped him in 1999 and Lee Blundell in 2002. He's never lost a fight at 154 pounds. You're wondering about why he has 26 tattoos? You know, boxers don't have numbers. Other <laughs> athletes in other sports have uniform numbers, but Rhodes, has 26 on his trunks and the tattoo on his left shoulder. His wife 
and his kids were all born on the 26th. So he's got his own uniform number. Small ring as we illustrated earlier, 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. Power right hand blocked by Rhodes. The good thing is with Rhodes being coming down from middleweight, at least he's used to probably seeing this kind of power. But I think he's going to see a lot of power tonight. Left hand by Rhodes after Alvarez touched Rhodes to the body. Sweeping left missed by Canelo. Rhodes acknowledged to us that he thinks he's a good puncher as well, but I hope he doesn't try to match Canelo punch for punch because Canelo is a very big puncher for this 154 pound division. Not a lot of explosive connects to this point. Rhodes blocks that combination, but the hometown crowd will roar in approval. That time, the right hand got him twice by Alvarez. Combination, watch back Rhodes. Very difficult to find a young fighter at this age with the poise that Alvarez has. Rhodes likes to switch from orthodox to southpaw. He goes southpaw here. Alvarez touched him with the right hand. End of round one. Relax. Relax, Canelo. It's okay. Take some air. Breathe. I feel good. You're gonna go right and then left first. And then on the left, go up. Left, left to right. So he gets set to start of round number two. Most meaningful punches in that round landed by Canelo Alvarez. I, I don't think Rhodes liked it uh, when he received the right hand overhand rights from Alvarez when he turned to the southpaw position. Hey, Roy, what's it like, um, you know, Canelo Alvarez? I mean, this is his 38th fight as a pro. He's fought in his hometown, but the stakes get bigger and bigger. What about the pressure of kind of fighting in your hometown? Well, everybody's depending on you for a wonderful show. I mean, you don't want to let nobody down because everybody that you were raised up with seems to be here. They all come, especially if they think you got a challenge on your hands. So it's a very difficult thing to do. You have to hold yourself together, but he's starting out in the right manner. He's very poised right now. He's not going out there one-punch knockout, and this is what you, have to, what you want to see. You don't want to see him go out there and lose focus on who he really is. Rhodes trying to work his jab. Just to keep Alvarez at back. Yeah, and Rhodes is not really being busy enough to try to pull off an upset here. And it, it's almost, Roy, it looks at least from ringside here, it's a tentative jab. It's almost like he's throwing it and then pulling back a little. Well, sometimes when they feel the power of the other fighter, it makes them keep those punches at home or throw them a little bit more tentatively than they normally would. Surprised that Rhodes hasn't switched up a little bit more. He likes to switch. Good combination by Alvarez. Pushes back Rhodes. Alvarez with a right hook over the top, left to the body. When Rhodes switched in that first round, Alvarez hit him with a really good overhand right, and I don't think he wants to taste that again no time soon. Well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> right hand to the arm by Alvarez. Uppercut to the body from Alvarez. Alvarez just missed with that left hook. Rhodes missed on the counter. In a situation like this with Rhodes, you're on the road, you know this guy's powerful. Don't you need to land something where he 
get some respect from you? Yeah, you got to try to get some respect, but the bad part about it for him, see, like that right hand just made him change again. The bad part of it for Rhodes is that if he comes in and opens up, it's going to allow Alvarez to land those big punches, and he doesn't want to do that. That's why he's not taking a gamble to go out and land something big. You know, they say live by the gun, die by the gun. If you open up and throw the big shot, you're also open to be hit by the big shot. Right hook, left hand combo from Alvarez. Alvarez throws the right again, the first one landed. Final seconds of round two, all Alvarez. Been in control and looks very relaxed. Tuesday night, catch the premiere of the latest edition of Real Sports featuring a profile of Tiki Barber, who's attempting an NFL comeback after a failed marriage and a disappointing broadcasting career. July 13th, it's the premiere of The Curious Case of Kurt Flood, an HBO sports documentary which examines the life and career of former Major League Baseball player Kurt Flood, whose fight for free agency forever changed professional sports. When you, when you back up, don't lift your chin up. Don't start looking for your lead up until he's in range, right? Here you see Canelo Alvarez come in with the jab, double jab, right hook to the shoulder, followed by a hook, right hook. I mean, a right hook, right. And that straight right hand landed straight down the pipe at the end. Way to put punches together for the young guy. Very nice, relaxed start for Canelo Alvarez. Um, he's not been overly aggressive, Roy, as we begin round number three. He's kind of taking what's being given to him and then capitalizing on it. This is what makes the kids so good, and this is what you usually adore about the Mexican fighters. They always seem to be so poised. They're like older guys, but they're only 20 and 21 years old. Alvarez will turn 21 on July the 18th. Rhodes trying to work that jab and just kind of get something established to catch the attention of Alvarez. He seems in a very comfortable place right now. Yeah, and Alvarez has also picked up his defense some. I noticed that last time we saw him on HBO, he was getting hit with a lot of shots, but I guess it was because he didn't fear Hatton's power. This time he's not giving up quite as many pop shots as he gave up the first time. Good combo. The left hand from Rhodes, and they kind of fell off balance. In 1997, Rhodes fought Otis Grant. He lost a close fight for a 160-pound belt. In his mind coming into this fight, he feels that he's now Otis Grant, going against a young guy who's really talented, but that the experience will pay dividends. Yeah, but the difference was he's not a big puncher, neither was Otis Grant. This guy is a heck of a puncher, and it's much more difficult to do the things that Otis Grant was able to do to him because he, this guy can hit you with one punch and take you out of there. You know, and he said something that was very revealing, Ryan Rhodes. He said, I feel like I'm getting this kid about 18 months before he might be too dangerous to fight. <laughs> and he was actually paying Alvarez a big compliment, like I'm getting him just early enough that 18 months from now, I don't think I could beat him. And that does tell you a lot about Alvarez. Alvarez digs in with those heavy hands. It's a pace and a flow that's working just fine for Canelo Alvarez. On the exchanges, he lands the bigger punches. Going for the home run right there and missed with the right. Counter shot by Alvarez after the Rose combination. Yeah, if Rose would not commit so much to that straight left hand and just kind of stick it out like a jab for a time or two, it would probably allow him to land it a little bit more. But because he's committing to it every time, Alvarez just waits and counters it. Final seconds in round number three. Like Alvarez there, like in there. control, just like that. What's going on? 
Relax, please. Just relax. I'm feeling okay. Pay attention when you connect with him with three or four shots. And then you come right back. So you hit, hit, and go down. And step back. So bend a little bit. So hit and bend a little bit. Okay. Little by little. When you throw your backhand, it's a little bit too high, and you're throwing it from too far out. Don't get desperate with it, trying to throw it, right? Once you know you're in range, fire it. It looks moving out of the and round number four underway between Canelo Alvarez and Ryan Rhodes. All the effective punches have been landed by the 20-year-old Canelo Alvarez so far in the fight. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside score. How about it? Set, Bob. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Bob, obviously Ryan Rhodes' game plan in this fight is not to box Canelo Alvarez, it's the fighter. I mean, he's standing there trying to bang punch for punch with Canelo, and it ain't working. Another thing, every time he switches southpaw, Canelo whacks him with right hands. That, that go in southpaw is not doing him the least bit of good. If you ask me, he ought to stay right-handed. You know, he's not fooling Canelo. Canelo's not having any problem with the southpaw stance. Three to nothing, Canelo Alvarez. Hard to dispute that card, Harold. Rhodes kind of on the defensive, a little bit tentative. Alvarez steps in this with the right hand. Roy, do you think that everything's going nicely right now for Alvarez, but do you think at some point does it your subconscious kick in and where you want to just start picking it up a little bit? Without a doubt it will. It'll, it'll kick in and he'll start doing things a little differently, but right now he's trying to take his time and make sure he feels uh, rolls out really good so that he doesn't do anything crazy. This is the best time for a guy to pull up and say this when you're at home because a guy expects you to get lackadaisical or you get too overconfident and try to go out and put out too much trying to get him out of there. Right hand. Knocks Rhodes off balance. He dips out of the corner and away from danger. Slick move by Rhodes. Alvarez blocks that left and right with his gloves. Double left hook to the body, right up the cut inside, scores for Alvarez. Beautiful combination by Alvarez. And Rhodes is down! against the quality of Canelo Alvarez. He kicks to the body, does Alvarez. and you're slipping, great. But then you're coming out of it with your hand down and he's catching on the end of it, right? We don't care about points, so don't worry about the losing a knockdown, right? As long as you're fine, don't give him anything. When he lands a shot, like that, don't give him anything. Defend, defend, fire off underneath, right? Right? And he'll come out like a steam train. PC Alvarez coming in with a right hand, a jab, a double jab, followed by another glancing right hand, hit him behind the head. And I think the kid was sort of off balance, but sometimes those shots behind the head do hurt. They see a, a right hand followed by a double jab, then another right hand that kind of caught him on the ear, but it did seem to take his balance because he lost control of that left foot. According to the copy box stats through the first four rounds, Alvarez with an advantage in power shots, 50 to 14. 
You heard the corner of Ryan Rhodes and Dave Caldwell. His trainers say, hey, don't worry about the points. I mean, he was pretty specific with us when we talked to him. He said, there's no way I'm winning the decision. I'm going to have to stop this shot. So it's almost like, who cares if you're giving away rounds? You're going to have to knock him out anyway at some point. And he got a point there, but the bad part about it is, like I said earlier, to do that, you have to open yourself up. And we'll have to wonder, can he take Canelo's punches as well? What can Rhodes do, Roy, to create some opportunities for himself? Well, it's to gamble, just like we just talked about. He got to, he has to gamble and try to land the big shots. That's the only chance he has, because he's going to get caught whether he gambles or not. So he may as well gamble and try to land his own big shots first and see what happens. What can he do, though, to sort of set up that gamble? Throw those lead punches without so much conviction in, in, in the beginning. He, throwing, he committed to every punch. You can't commit to every punch because now Alvarez knows you're coming, and he's just going to count it. And if you wait on him, that's what's going to happen. Good stiff jab from Alvarez, and then a combination. He's waiting too much, Rhodes is, and he's giving up too many punches right now. In some cases, the best defense is offense. <laughs> Love the way Alvarez sets things up with body shots. And that right there, what Rose is doing now, stepping to him. If he's going to fight this type of fight, that's what he may as well do. Just step to him and make it happen. Okay. Okay. Very comfortable going for Canelo Alvarez as he rips another combination, opens up with that left hook, doubles up with the right hand. Nothing coming back from Rose. Four combinations from Alvarez. And the other thing we have to take into consideration is the fact that Rose is 14 years older than Alvarez, but he only has 12 more fights. So who truly is the veteran here? trying to punish the body of Rose. Chops the right hand from above. I like Rose's game plan, but he's giving up way too many punches early. And the five rounds, all Alvarez. You're doing well. Relax. Relax. It's still dangerous. He's slowing down a little bit, but he's still dangerous. So he's got. Listen, do you want to win this world title? What's the fucking do? Right then. Let's start putting some hands on him. Right? Okay? You know your little steps back? You're not doing it. Right? You're not doing it. Drop back. Right? You've been more sound defensively as an orthodox, but fidget it and then fire straight off it. Okay? Right? Don't stand there, start letting him do it. You're letting him work you over. Right? Come on. Hey? Right? Come on. Well, the corner of Alvarez with some good advice there in the sense that, look, he's still dangerous, meaning Rhodes, but he's starting to slow down. And a little bit of sort of pleading in Rhodes' corner, Roy, and the fact that you're not using some of the things that you need to use in order to create opportunities like that little step back they talked about. What yep. do they mean by that? Well, he's giving up too many punches, and when he punches, like I told you earlier, he's committing to the punch so much that he can't step back to, to avoid Alvarez's counter. So if you're going to step back, you can't commit or you can't overcommit to the punch. He's overcommitting to the punches, which leaves him there for Alvarez to count. And he said you're letting him work you over. That means he's giving up too many punches, like I said, at the end of the last round. Good hook landed by Rose, though. We're in Guadalajara, Mexico. HBO's Boxing After Dark. Bob Papa, Roy Jones, Harold Letterman. In Guadalajara, Canelo Alvarez and Ryan Rhodes in round number six. For Alvarez's 154-pound belt. Rhodes has been down once, that in round four. And Rhodes has also landed the best right hand that he's landed all night long.
Try to jump in with that left. Alvarez blocked some of it. Rose has to, has to get on the attack and stay on the attack. He's not. A, he's, he's allowing Canelo to get his confidence back and to rest and stay powerful because he's not consistently attacking him. Canelo can fight at this pace all week long. Alvarez allowed to set up and then throw one of those big body shots. Yeah, now I did see Rose just throw a left hand without committing to it too much, and you saw he landed the punch without getting counted. Time to hook to the body and then threw a left hand that caught the face of Canelo. Rose has landed his best three punches in this round of the fight period. And that's where he messes up at. He overcommits and allows Canelo to throw three or four counters. Southpaw stance. Stay southpaw. Right there when he stuck that left hand out like a right hand, you saw he landed the flush and he didn't get counted. That's what I mean when I say he shouldn't overcommit. Uh, how do you feel, son? Did he hit you up in the head? I'm okay. Relax, kid, relax. I'm fine. Segurito, mi Confident. How do you feel him? He's strong, but he's slowing down. What? Vaseline in his eye. Listen, listen, listen. Stay orthodox, right? Move fast movements, but keep your left hand up, right? When you're not punching, get out of it, right? On the end of your shot, take yourself away so he can't hit you back. Al Canelo Alvarez is outlanded Ryan Rhodes by 50 punches through the first six rounds. 95 to 45 power shots. Rhodes down in round four. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside score. Howard Letterman. You know, Bob, I think Rhodes' corner was right when they said don't stand in front of him. Six to nothing, 60 to 53, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Canelo gets an extra point to round four. That's a 10-8 round. That Ryan Rhodes is cut under his right eye. He's got a bad bruise or he's bleeding a little bit under the right eye. But Canelo Alvarez, then the heart of the shots. Rhodes making a mistake of just standing right there in front of him. Every time he picks those hands up, uh, Canelo whacks him with a left hook or a good straight right hand. So Canelo Alvarez doing all the leading, doing all the punches. He's the aggressor. He's winning the fight six to nothing. And by the way, this heck of a food from Panama doing a terrific job as a referee. I like him a lot. All right, Harold. And Alvarez again landing hard combinations to Rose. Yeah, all those punches that we talked about Rose taking earlier are starting to show up now. That's why you see his face starting to bust up because he took so many shots early and it wasn't landing enough on Alvarez in order to make up for it. That's a push. Hector Hopper, the referee, rules it immediately even though the crowd rejoices. Interesting thing about Rhodes, knowing coming in that he needs a knockout to win here in Guadalajara as we're into round number seven. In his career, he's got 31 knockouts. But only five have come after the sixth round. Alvarez works the body, goes to the head. And once again, Rose is giving up far too many punches here. Alvarez is having his way. He can do this all night long. Fans cheering on Canelo to a rhythmic beat. And he's had pretty good rhythm throughout the course of this fight against Ryan Rose. Oh, 
got that stick under the right eye of Wilkes. He did not bring a cut man from England. We were told Fernando Garcia will handle the cuts. It's not in a dangerous spot it's below the eye of the cheek. End of round number seven, Alvarez in total control. Keep the red still, let him work, listen to me. You're either going to get stopped here, right, and you're going to go all not doing anything and you're going to Right, it's Gary Lockett all over again, right? This Stay Tuesday night, the don't miss the premiere of Real Sports, which takes a look at Saadi Gaddafi, son of Omar Gaddafi, who's surely the worst player to ever grace the roster of a first division Italian soccer club. Then July 23rd, World Championship Boxing returns with a big time showdown in the 140 pound division as fellow titleists Amir Khan and Zab Ju to face off with each other, their title belts on the line. Move your head and fire downstairs. I need you to fire. Fire me twos and threes. Do you understand? Listen, we had a good round last round. Let's do it again. Come on. Round number eight begins. Can Ryan Rhodes change the dynamic? Canelo Alvarez in the green in total control. 30 and 0, 26 knockouts. Alvarez dropped Rhodes in the fourth round. Rhodes has been a bit busier on average according to the copy box numbers. There you go, there you go. Alvarez landing at a stronger clip. Power shots to his advantage. Actually, Alvarez is going to get busier. Averaging 45 punches is thrown around. Okay. Disturbance outside the ring as the action continues in the ring. with a nice combination. Yeah, he puts these four and five punch combinations together really well, ending them most of the time with a good body shot. Well, the other thing he's been doing nicely in this fight is not ignoring the body. Nice combination. Rhodes responds with a shot of his own. He also throws a beautiful uppercut that he's mixing in his combinations. And for some reason, for some reason, Rhodes can't seem to avoid that uppercut. Rhodes block that combination from Alvarez. No, no, no. Canelo ducks away and then do it back of Rhodes. Doubles up the left hand as Alvarez. Rhodes is giving it a game effort, but I just don't think he has enough of his attack to do Alvarez any damage. So now Alvarez is really hurting his body bad. They hard to the body. Slows down Rhodes again. Good thundering left hand to the rib cage. Those body shots are really taking a lot out of Rhodes. Been pretty easy for Canelo. Rhodes is not throwing enough punches and just not busy enough right now. Going to copy box in this round, Alvarez has a 23 to 1 edge in power shots. Connected. See, Rhodes throws one punch right there when he needs to throw four or five. I know he's going for a knockout, but that one punch is not going to knock Alvarez out. And of eight, all Canelo here in Guadalajara. Stay concentrated, son. It's going okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Don't lose out of it. You're not going to stop him. I know he did. But you went southward, didn't you? You went southward and you got caught with body shot, right? 
Listen to me. Have a drink. Stay orthodox. Right? When you, you've started. When you're throwing that right hand, you're throwing it half hard. You're going to get a lot in. Right here, you see Alvarez slip the right hand, come up with a right of his own, a left hook to the head, followed by a beautiful left to the body. That right body shot really hurt Rose. And he comes right back with the left body shot again. And I think that, that body shot is what's doing the most damage, or what did the most damage in that round. Ryan Rhodes, Nick down to the right eye. Canelo Alvarez's face virtually unmarked. Round number nine underway. All Alvarez to this point. Yeah, he landed two beautiful left body shots then that really caused a lot of problems for Rhodes. I think he's just about at that point to where Rhodes is not quite as dangerous as he once was. Rhodes making it pretty easy for Alvarez. He's not pressuring, he's letting Alvarez move around here. He's not really cutting the ring off for him. Well, he's cutting the ring off, he's just that he's not punching. That was a good shot. He's not throwing enough punches. When he punches, he usually lands a decent shot on Alvarez, but he's not throwing enough punches. And what people don't understand on the outside of the boxing ring is when you're absorbing punches, it takes just as much out of you to absorb a punch as it does to, to throw one. So whether you're delivering punishment or you're taking punishment, it's still the same. So if he's going to be out there, he may as well throw the punches. He's going to get just as tired if he's absorbing them. Alvarez really kind of taking it easy in the first half of the round. Now he opens up a little bit. Well, he looked a little winded that last round itself when he throwed his hands on, on Rose's head and leaned down after a combination. But he can bounce back. Well, because Rose didn't pressure him at all when he was sort of taking the part of the round off. Exactly. So he just takes his time now. Rose is not throwing enough punches to really outpoint him, so he's being smart about it. And that's what you really love most about Alvarez. He fights like an older fighter. He fights like a veteran already at the age of 20. Well, this is his 234th round as a pro, and he's not even 21 yet. <laughs> and Rose is giving it a gallant effort. He's just not throwing enough punches. Very game effort, has taken up everything that, Aver that our Alvarez has hit him with, but he's just not throwing enough punches to really pull off an upset. But Roy, isn't something have to do with in those first, you know, two, three rounds, he sort of felt the power of Alvarez, which caused him some concern? I don't think so. Um, I think he's just saving it, trying to make sure he don't wear himself out because he don't want to get caught with those body shots while he's tired. How do you feel, son? I'm going to... Don't trust him. Right now you were a little too passive. And he hit you on the side. Everything all right? We begin round number 10 as we check in with Harold Letter. Okay, Bob, I've got it 90 to nothing, 90 to 80, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Brian Rhodes won a round. That I didn't see it. He did a little bit better in the sixth round, but that's about as close as he came, and he lost that round. Bob, one thing I want to point out. Dave Caldwell, in a blue corner, that's Brian Rhodes' trainer, is sitting on the apron. He has no right being on the apron. It's grounds for disqualification. 
I mean, if the referee really wanted to get sticky, he could disqualify Rhodes because his corner man is on the apron. You're not allowed to be on the apron. You have to be on the floor while the round is on. Ninth and I think Canelo Alvarez. All right, Harold. I don't think it really matters much, but <laughs> as Alvarez has given Rhodes a beating, you know, Rhodes said he needed a knockout to win in Alvarez's backyard. If he's going to win this fight, he's going to have to do something he's never done in his career. Get a knockout past the ninth round. <laughs> Rhodes, when Alvarez wants to reset, boy, is just allowing him to reset, take a deep breath. And really not putting any pressure and ever making Alvarez feel uncomfortable. Yeah, he's letting the power punch and save his power up. And you can't beat him like that. I mean, you're not going to knock him out like that. And you can't just wait on him to throw power punches at you. It's going to cause you the most, the most damage in the end or in the long run. Oh, good good body body shot. shot by Alvarez. Goes to the body again, right to the ear. Left hand scores. Rhodes gets away from more danger. Well, Alvarez doesn't even have to be concerned about defense because Rhodes is not punching. And his corner told him a couple rounds ago not to go southpaw because he's not working for him and he's southpaw now. Nothing coming from Rhodes. Taps out a couple of jabs. That's it. But the bad part about that, not that it won't happen because we never know what's going to happen in the future, but this is why you tell fighters not to go into a fight looking for a knockout. You get caught looking instead of, instead of working or throwing the punches, and they never come. The shot never opens up because you're doing more watching than you are punching. He looks like a fighter who's out there looking for a knockout. That's when it's most less likely to happen. And he hasn't done the work to even tire out Alvarez to a point where maybe a punch could have an effect. You know, we saw last round, he hit him with a right hand, and Alvarez just kind of shrugged it off. Relax. Uh, relax. Just relax. How do you feel? I'm good. Two more rounds to go. If this is a safe one. Listen, you drop your hands and let him throw it, he'll stop it. Right? And then you know you've not given everything. Chin down, hands up, walk the fuck back. Right? Just kick him in the start, double up on your hook, and fire. You've got two rounds in you. Right? Come on, listen. Give it everything you've got. You will knock him out if you land him in twos and threes. And move your head after it. Come on, kid. Well, the corner of Ryan Rhodes imploring him to give it his all. In round number 10, Alvarez landed 24 power shots to Rhodes' three. Numbers dramatically lopsided in Alvarez's favor as we begin round 11. Alvarez touches Rhodes to the body, combination to the head, backs up Rhodes. Every time Rhodes turns south Paul, just about, he gets caught with that big right hand from Alvarez. Yeah, he thought it would be a weapon. It really has not been at all, Roy. The, the ability to switch. I think it's been more of a hindrance tonight than it has been him. Yeah, and his corner told him earlier in the fight, stay orthodox. Don't switch. It's not working, but he still does.
Rose hooks for the body, missed the big right hand over the top as Alvarez ducked away. Well, he's still trying to knock out, though. That was a very good combination he threw, and it had very good conviction on it. So he's still game, he's still trying for that knockout. He hasn't given it up yet. Well, I don't think he'll give it up. Rhodes combination and then a looping left from Alvarez. I think Rhodes is just starting a little too late. Plus, to this point, when he's hit Alvarez with some clean shots, he just hasn't hurt him at all. No, but at least he landed more. He was landing him when he was throwing him. When he doesn't throw him, he doesn't land him at all. Corner of Rose trying to exhort Ryan on. Tell him to come forward, put some pressure on him. So now Rose is beating under both eyes. of round 11. Yes, again. Yes, again. It didn't like it, Ryan. We got three minutes. Right? Rápido, rápido. Listen, you might as well get knocked out in this last round. Right? You've lost every round. Right? You might as well get knocked out in this last round because it makes no difference. At least aquilo, fire aquilo. your shot. Hands up. Stay open up. Hands up and let your shots go. Enjoy, enjoy what you're doing here. We're almost there. Are you all right? I'm fine. All right. right, you could do another three rounds of this shit, right? But you're not working. One round, three minutes That's left. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, three minutes left. Do yourself proud. Oh. Chin down and fire. Oh, Roy, what'd you think about that as we begin the 12th and final round? Uh, and Rhodes Corner said, you might as well get knocked out. I mean, go for it. What are you what, waiting for? That's what he's basically saying. And that's how he should, that's how he should have been talking to him since round six. I mean, a loss is a loss whether he get knocked out or whether he just gives it up. I mean, he hasn't won a round. And he's about to go down anyway. So why not land something while you're going? Alvarez opens up. And lands the good punches. No, no, no. Fine, fine. Okay? Okay? Fine. Instead of Rose looking for a knockout, Alvarez is. <laughs> he wants to close the show in his hometown. Rose gets rocked. Referee stops it. One month shy of his 21st birthday, Canelo Alvarez gets his 27th stoppage. Does it in the 12th round. Well, he closed out the show, Roy. Yeah, Rhodes Corner said go for the knockout. Canelo took care of that. Yeah, I think I think Dave saw that coming, and I think that's why he tried to send Rhodes out to go for the knockout. So at least if he did get knocked out, he would get knocked out trying. Well, Ryan Rhodes took a pounding, got dropped in the fourth round, and it gets stopped in the 12th. Just did not have enough, Roy, as we take a look at how the fight ended. Yeah, here you see Alvarez on the attack with one, two, double hook, hook to the body, double right hand to the head. I mean, you can't ask for much better than that. Another one, two, three, four, five punch combination. The referee had to come in. A six punch was on the way. It was, the towel was on the way. Everybody was trying to stop it. Once you get you see the one, two, five by the left uppercut, left body shot, right hook, straight right. Then he comes back with a one, two, a left hook, a right uppercut, another right hand, a jab just in case. That's how you put punches together. 
Dave Caldwell thrown in the towel. Referee stepped in, and Canelo Alvarez sold close to 12,000 tickets in his hometown of Guadalajara, and everybody except the 20 in the Rhodes traveling party leaves happy. <laughs> uh, but Roy, you know, he went after the guy's body early. He stayed solid with the body punches. He dug in with his power shots and fought a good disciplined fight. He fought a very disciplined fight, and that's why I said these guys, for some reason, well, I know why they have so many fights and so many amateur fights that they learn the game well. They're very prepared for the professional ranks. So with a term pro and they're good, they're really good. They're exceptionally good. And Rhodes, who's campaigned his whole career at 154 and 160, at least as far as the weight class, legitimate, you know, Hatton had come all the way up in, in Alvarez's last fight. And Dew was 39, Baldemir was 38. Here's a 34-year-old, and he was just outdone, Ryan Rhodes was. I don't think he ever seen this type of punching power. And the face shows it. To the shoulders goes Canelo. And he keeps his 154-pound belt. And Ryan Rhodes' face sort of tells the story. But Ryan Rhodes fought a very gutsy game fight. He gave it all he had. And like I said, to the youngsters out there watching, this is why you try to not go into a fight looking for a knockout. Well, Canelo Alvarez gets his first 12th round stoppage and uh, you know pretty comfortable fight for him as we mentioned nice and disciplined through the course of the fight and, uh, you know Ryan Rhodes never able to really hurt Alvarez in this fight Alvarez dropped Rhodes in the fourth round and finished him off in round number 12. Let's send it up to our ring announcer Joe Martinez. Estamos en los 48 segundos del último round. El referee para la pelea para el ganador por knockout técnico. The end comes 48 seconds. Round number 12. Your winner by TKO victory. Se mantiene el invicto campeón mundial. Super Werther CMB. And still the undefeated WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Saul Canelo. So Canelo Alvarez victorious here this evening with a 12th round stoppage of Ryan Rhodes and did it in impressive fashion throughout the course of the evening was able to dominate this fight really from start to finish never in danger during the course of this fight and uh, finished off the show in grand fashion in front of his hometown crowd. And let's take a look at the final punch stats. For Alvarez and Rhodes, Alvarez lands 219 of 590, 37%. He was much busier than Rhodes, who was 90 of 343 for 26%. And the story was told in this fight via the power punches as Alvarez lands a whopping 52%, 192 of 371. Rhodes landed just 40 power shots in the fight at 31%. And one of the things that Alvarez did so effectively in this fight was his ability to work the body. And that was a key component, Roy, in him being able to win this fight. Yeah, that was most definitely a key component. But the other thing that worked in his favor was that small ring. Rose couldn't have got away from him if he wanted to. There was no way for him to get away from Alvarez's power. There was nowhere to run because that was a very small ring. All right, Roy, we're joined here at ringside first by Ryan Rhodes. We'll hear from Canelo Alvarez momentarily and uh, Ryan joins us here at ringside and uh, Ryan talk about you know sort of the way this fight unfolded and and his power early on kind of told the story didn't it absolutely I had it in my head I had to knock this kid out you know I had 12 I, I knew I weren't going to get the decision out here um, I think I probably underestimated his power he's a strong young kid um, it caught me with a lot of body shots every round and they took the toll on, on me and uh, Later on the fight, they just, you know, I, th I think his body shots were fantastic through the fight, all the way through the fight. I seem to ride a lot of his head shots, but the body shots, good body shots. All right, your corner before the start of the 12th round said, hey, listen, you know, if you get knocked out, what the heck, go out there and try. Were you surprised that he turned it up the way he did so comfortably ahead on the card? Yeah, because to be fair, I think he had a rest in the 11th round and, and you know, put it, everything into it in that final round. 
McCona said, listen, I knew, I knew I was well, well behind anyway, so I knew I knew to go out in that 12th round, do the best I could. Again, he caught me with good body shots, and they just took the toll on me in the 12th round. I just he really caught me with some good body shots. I thought I, caught, I rode the shots to the head pretty well. I just couldn't get out of the way of the body shots. Were you surprised because you're so good at switching from orthodox to southpaw? In this fight, your corner told you in the middle of the fight, stop doing it uh, because he didn't seem bothered by it at all. I was catching him more orthodox. Uh, my corner realized that, I realized that. Every time I switched southpaw, he seemed to catch me a lot more. So I stayed orthodox a lot more through the fight. You're 34 years of age. Uh, you've been fighting a long time. You came into this fight 235 rounds under your belt. What's next for Ryan Rhodes, or is this kind of the end of the line for you? This is the end of the road for Ryan Line. Listen, I've been beat by a superstar in world boxing tonight. He's a superstar, 20 years old, and he's a superstar. I'm going to go back, have a, have a holiday with my wife and my kids, have a good break. I'm still number one in Europe. Um, maybe I can come back fight for my European title, which I never lost. I gave my European title up. So this is the end of Ryan Rhodes. I've been beat tonight by a superstar in world boxing. All right, let's take a look at the end of the fight, Ryan. Is it more, at this point, just fatigue from all the shots earlier? Body shots. They took the toll all the way through the fight. The kid's a fantastic body puncher. Um, yeah, it caught me with some good edge shots. Uh, the referee in the, I think, the 11th or the 10th round, he caught me with a couple of shots, and, and the referee came to the corner and went, you've got to throw more shots. So I knew the referee was looking at me. But the body shots took the toll on me, and he's a fantastic, he's a superstar, like I said. Take nothing away from this young kid. He's 20 years old, but he's going places. Well, you told us that uh, maybe you're getting him 18 months early. Maybe it wasn't that way, was it? Absolutely. We thought we were getting him 18 months to, uh, early. He's a good kid. He's a fantastic kid. Ryan, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Right. Thanks. Ryan Rhodes uh, joining us here at ringside. You know, Roy, you pointed out earlier, we saw it earlier, the body shots were just something that was impressive in this fight and really made uh, sort of the difference. Yeah, those body shots really made a big difference. It was a lot, um, a lot of good body work early in the fight, and that usually will weaken a fighter, uh, especially if a guy's a strong body puncher like Alvarez is. All right, well, Canelo Alvarez joins us here at ringside. Um, Christian is here to interpret. Uh, all right, so one month shy of your 21st birthday. Uh, would you say that this was one of your most complete efforts to date? A un mes de tus 21 años, dirías que eso fue un esfuerzo muy completo para ti. Sí, así es. Estoy muy contento. Creo que hice un buen trabajo. Hice un buen trabajo, una buena preparación, y esto apenas empieza. Uh, I'm very happy. I did a really good job, and I trained really well for it, so it paid off. Canelo, did you feel early in the fight um, you hit him with some pretty good body shots, and he just admitted to us that that took a lot out of him. Could you sense that in the ring? Notamos que le pegaste muy fuerte en el cuerpo y él dijo que eso realmente le afectó mucho. ¿Notaste lo mismo en el, en el cuadrilátero? Así es, lo, lo, lo escuché, lo sentí cuando lo golpeé abajo. Lo sentí al puro golpear abajo, pues resintió y pues traté de golpear abajo un poco más y pues me resultó eso muy bien. Yeah, I could really feel him flinch when I hit him and I tried that a little more. Before the final round, his corner said, listen, go for the knockout. You're not going to win on a decision. You wind up closing the show. Is that something that you had in mind to finish him in the 12th round? Al final del del 12 le dijo su esquina que que se fuera por el knockout, ¿no? Pero ya tú ganaste por decisión. ¿Qué te pareció? Por knockout, gané por knockout. Pues yo creo que eso fue lo que lo que le falló, ¿no? Irse con todo, se descuidó mucho y pues fue donde yo empecé a agarrarlo mucho más. I think this is where he really faltered, you know, because I I was able to get on him later on as well. Canelo, um, Miguel Cotto, obviously big name at 154. Alfredo Angulo is here this evening. Obviously, Chavez had a big win. You and Chavez are the two biggest names in Mexico. When can we expect to see one of these super fights for you? Está Cotto, está Angulo. Estoy listo, estoy listo para todos. Yo me preparo para pelear. Mis manejadores dicen con qué peleo. Si me dicen que peleo con el diablo, peleo con el diablo. You know, I'm ready to really fight anybody. My managers will tell me who to fight. If I have to fight the devil, I will fight the devil. Does that mean uh, possibly Chavez? Yo estoy listo para todo. I'm ready for I'm ready any. For ev I'll let him do it in English. He's been working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for, for everything. Canelo, thank you very much. Thank you, too. Congratulations. Canelo Alvarez, uh, impressive fashion tonight. Roy, um, you know, really took care of business. I, we saw sort of a, a maturity 
sort of in his game tonight in front of the hometown crowd. You talked about you know what it's like to fight in front of your hometown fans, but he was patient, workmanlike, and just outmanned Ryan Rhodes. He was very smart, very uh, patient, very economical with his punches. He didn't come out wanging away right away trying to give the fans a knockout. He said that he'd take his time, wear the guy down, listen to his corner because his corner kept telling him, is he still a little dangerous? Not yet. Once he got beyond that point, he was able to break him down, take advantage of him, and close the show at the right time. That is maturity. That is discipline. Well, he's just 20 years of age. He turns 21 next month. Sells tickets, whether it's in Los Angeles, <laughs> whether it's in here in Guadalajara.